It's time for another episode of SJHL Insider. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Jeremy Corrigan, the media manager of the Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League. And of course, the SJHL Insider is presented by SGI, our podcast sponsor. But we also have uh, amazing sponsors that help us put on these shows each and every week, being Chevrolet, Capital Auto Mall, Great Western, Cantera Seeds, RBC, SaskTel, SGEU, Direct West, Saskatchewan Construction Safety Association, Tourism Saskatchewan, and Young's Equipment. Another jam-packed episode of SJHL Insider. We will be joined by our good friend, the play-by-play -play voice of the Notre Dame Hounds, Jamie Neugebauer. Big game tonight for the Hounds. They return to the Duncan McNeil Arena tonight for a game against the Yorkton Terriers, who are coming in on a four-game losing streak. So they'll be looking to snap that streak, and the Hounds will be looking to get back into the win column. But we'll get into all of that and much, much more as I bring in my co-host, Mr. Clark Monroe. Clark, how are we doing today? It is a lively one today. I'm is excited. It? Yes, we're looking forward to a good one, uh, a good show, and a, what a, makes a good... the day so lively? Oh, well, there's been some, uh, there's been a lot of really good conversations being had over the last little while, but just about things coming mm. up and, and upcoming games and things that have been going on around the league the last week or so. That's some fair. awesome performances, some mm. really good games, especially last night, and we'll get to that in a minute. There were some really good games last night in terms of, you know, kind of close games, really sure. interesting wins, really interesting losses. So we'll get to that in a minute, like I said. But, um, yeah, it's, it's just been a fun uh, last week, and I'm excited to get into this one. Lots of hockey uh, during the week this week, unlike last week. I think last week we only had two games during the week. This yes. week, uh, a lot. We had two on Tuesday, four on Wednesday, but we will get into that uh, to kick off uh, your, your favorite segment. So it's, you might as well toss it. It's about that time. Let's get into it. The hat trick. There go my hat. Just tossing them everywhere. Love it. Every time. Pick them up. Let's get into topic number one, of course, on the hat trick. We got to take a look back at Tuesday's action and Wednesday's action. So, Jeremy, let's get into Tuesday to kick it off. We had two games, like you mentioned. Uh, so, if we can bring up that, it's got Estevan at Battlefords and, of course, Melville at LaRange. Yeah, a couple uh, of one-sided games. A couple, yeah. For the, for the home teams, obviously, Battleford picking up a 7-2 win and... I mean, they continue on their winning ways. And then the LaRange Ice Wolves with an impressive 5-1 win over the Melville Millionaires. Melville, that game kicked off four games and five nights for the Millionaires. And I think, I, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty confident they also traveled that day, which is definitely also a... It's difficult when you got to make that long of a, a, of a travel on the bus and then play the LaRange Ice Wolves at the Mel Heglin Uniplex, a very difficult rink to play in. So it was, it was it was a tough one for the Mills. And it might have shown a little bit, too, because LaRange had nine power plays and also 55 shots. Yes, it was uh, a very, uh, very busy night for the busy goalie. night for the goalie. Uh, we, we were talking about that played back to back. We'll get into Wednesday's sure. uh, games in a second here. But um, yeah, LaRange uh, had their way with Melville on Tuesday and Battleford's had a big night. And that was a it was a weird one, Jared, because we were talking about it like it was. It was 3-2 at one point in the second period, and then they took off and won 7-2. So um, I don't know. What did you see in that game specifically out of Battleford's? Well, we've seen time and time again with the Battleford North Stars. Uh, sometimes they will just go and so in a tight game, and a switch will flick on, and they will explode for numerous goals in a short period of time. We saw it with Yorkton against Yorkton last week. It was a 4-3 game in the Thursday uh, night game between the Battleford North Stars and the Yorkton Terriers uh, at the ACC in Battlefords. And then uh, the North Stars exploded for five goals in the third period, and it turned into a 9-3 game. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the North Stars have, uh, I do believe, they, they've scored the most amount of goals in the Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League this year. They have a potent offense, and we've, we've talked about the depth of their hockey club. And it's kind of not surprising seeing uh, the fact that they can find the back of the net as much as they do. I would have thought that game would have been a, a bit closer just because of Cam Herdlicka in between the pipes, but uh, the North Stars ended up uh, chasing Herdlicka in that one. I think he allowed four goals, and then they uh, put in Jackson Miller. So regardless, a, a big win for Battleford. They uh, are now 14-0-0-1 on the season, and, uh, you know, they have a big, 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 big 
weekend. Quick correction, it was only 3-1 at one point going into the second period. They did score uh, a couple goals in the first half of the second period to make it 5-1. But uh, just a quick one here before we move on to Wednesday's games. Call of the week candidate for Marty Martinson on the peanut butter and jelly call that he had after the Jake Southgate goal in that game. Uh, If you haven't seen it, go check out the highlight pack uh, for that game specifically. You won't be disappointed. Yes, it was I would I would recommend subscribing to Hockey TV. Um, and if you haven't heard uh, Marty call a game, I highly recommend it. He's one of the best uh, in the Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League. There's a lot of talented broadcasters in the league, but uh, Marty has a tendency to uh, uh, throw in some interesting analogies. Uh, some that'll definitely put a smile on your face, and yeah. that that peanut butter and jelly one definitely did. Yeah. Um, but then on Wednesday we had uh, four games on schedule uh, last night, much much busier. Uh, Humboldt doubled up Yorkton six three, Estevan with the three two shootout win uh, over Kindersley, snapping a four game losing streak. Melville bounced back with a five three win over the Laurange Ice Wolves, and the Melford Mustangs won their third in a row over Weyburn, winning four two. Good for I, you know, the first thing that stands out in that game is, you know, uh, for Estevan, obviously snapping a four game losing streak. Uh, that's great for them, especially in that Viterra division where it's oh so tight uh, when it comes to the standings. And Melville, obviously, they're playing, they're playing four games in five nights on the road, two games in LaRange, two games against Flin Flon. That is not an easy trip. No, not especially, easy especially at all. this year. Yeah. Because LaRange and Flin Flon are, are two of the best teams in the league. They're not making it easy on anybody coming through there. Correct. Yeah. Uh, so for them to bounce back the way they did, uh, LaRange scored a tying goal halfway through the third period last night to make it 3 3. But then uh, just a couple of minutes later, um, the Melville Millionaires bounce back and uh, they get the go ahead goal and they score the empty netter to pick up the win. Um, Humboldt, you know, they, uh, they were very impressive. I was at that game last night in Yorkton. They were very impressive. Uh, after 20 minutes of play, they were up 3-1 over the Yorkton Terriers. Uh, the shots on goal, Clark. Yeah. 19 to three. I would say that's. I would say that's lopsided. Yes, and uh, what made it interesting was uh, Yorkton scored on their first shot of the game, and then for the longest time it was that was their only shot, and uh, you'd see the shots be like 10-1, 11-1, and then. Finally, uh, Humboldt got through on a bit of a cheeky goal. You can take a look at the highlights um, on the SJHL YouTube page. But uh, it, that seemed to be the spark that they kind of needed. And then the offense continued uh, to roll in that one. Well, and uh, a quick one, too, from uh, Clark Stork on Twitter, the voice of the Nippon Hawks. Uh, he said if there was any question as to who the best player in the SJHL was, Jacob Boucher might be the best player now. That was his tweet after that game. Mm. Uh, Jacob Boucher is putting his mark. And I just checked before uh, we started this recording, and he he has over two points per game so far in his six games in the league. Uh, He has very much been impressive, and he obviously, first week in the league, he got MVP of the week, uh, and I don't think he's slowing down. Jacob Boucher is putting his stamp on the league for sure. Yeah, and just to add, uh, to wrap up, I guess, uh, the last two days, uh, the Melfort Mustangs with a 4-2 win over the Weyburn Red Wings. Weyburn kicking off three games in four nights. Um, not obviously the result they would like, but Melfort with their third straight win, and uh, they're they're starting to play some really good hockey. Def- obviously, defensively, we, we took a look at the shots on goal from yeah. last night. Talk about shots on goal. 47 to 12. They only allowed final. 12 shots on yeah. goal. Give Way- Weyburn credit. That's great shooting percentage. Great. But a great shooting percentage. However, when the shots are that lopsided, obviously the Melford Mustangs are doing something right defensively for sure. Well, that and that was actually one of two games that had lead, uh, lead changes at one point. Weyburn came out to a 2-1 lead in that one. And then you mentioned earlier the in the Estevan Kindersley game, Estevan was down 2-1 at one point. So right. um, you saw a couple. Of, that's where I was getting at earlier with the, the close games. And then there was a couple lead changes. So, um, you know, Melford... They, they came in late. They scored three third-period goals to yeah. kind of seal that one. Uh, so it was a big one for them. Uh, they can sneak that one out. And it's tough, you know, on the road when you got a team on the ropes, uh, 2-1. Uh, it's tough to lose that. But uh, Melford played a strong second half of that game. Yeah, a rare busy night Wednesday in uh, the SJHL. But uh, let's quickly move on to uh, topic two. Yeah, topic two. There was a couple of trades in the league the, this past week. Um 
one going out and one just swapping teams. Mm -hmm. So uh, Jackson Fellner moving teams. Jeremy, you want to touch on that one? Uh, yes, Jackson Fellner being traded uh, by Melfort to the Nipwin Hawks for a fourth round pick in the 2023 SJHL draft. I think it's interesting just because Fellner is a 19 year old netminder. Um, and for the Nipwin Hawks, um, I think we talked about it on SJHL Weekly or last week on SJHL Insider. Um, they're, they're, they've allowed the most goals in the Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League, and I, I think they're just, right now, they're looking for some answers, both, I think, with their defensive play and in between the pipes. So, um, you know, they pick up Jackson Fellner, who played last year with Weyburn, had one game in the lineup, I think, with Melfort this season. So uh, we'll see if he's in the lineup for Nipawin this weekend. Yeah, for sure. Um, and the other trade was uh, Weyburn trading Kirk Mullen to Steinbeck in the Manitoba yeah. Junior League. And that one, uh, we were talking about it a little bit the other day, yeah. Jer. Um, you know, a, a really good player uh, going from now. There is also a return that we will find out about down the road, future considerations right. and, a, and a player development right. fee. Uh, what were your thoughts when you saw that? Surprised. Yeah, I think that's the easiest way to the. I think that'd be the biggest thing. Yeah, I was surprised when I woke up to uh, uh, the, news. The, the news. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I think you know we at the beginning of the season. I know myself, Nugzi, Rory. We always talked about Kirk Mullen. I think he played a style of hockey that I, I think everybody loved. Moose you know, Jaw, Saskatchewan boys, hardworking. Well. Yeah. You know the type of guy you want on your team and. Um, yeah, I, was just, I think I was just really surprised with, with the move. And yeah, like you mentioned, um, Kirk Mullen got traded to the Steinbeck Pistons of the M Manitoba Junior Hockey League for uh, a player development fee and future considerations. What those are, we'll, we'll find out. Um, but yeah, I was very surprised by the trade. Yeah, and we've seen, like I said, we've seen trades in the past with these future considerations on impactful 19-year-old players mm -hmm. that pay off. So we'll see. I mean, Cody Mapes, uh, he's a young GM, and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm curious to see how this one works out. But we'll, we'll find out in time. I'm sure he has a plan, I'm just sure like he. every head coach Absolutely. and general manager. But uh, on a more lighthearted note, let's go to the final point of the hat trick. Yeah, topic number three, uh, the hat trick goal, as you will. The Kidsport Cup standings, we got to mm -hmm. get an update on that. Uh, last time we saw it, we were only a few games into the season. It wasn't that long in. Yeah, uh, I think it was so, at the beginning of the month. So we're now, well, yeah, I guess, depending on how, which team you are, eight or nine games into the year mm -hmm. for in terms of home games. Uh, now, some teams have a little bit more and some teams have a little bit less. But look at that top team. Uh, now, they have played the most home games. Yes. Yes. yes but yes. I was talking <laughs> That's to still a lot of goals. I was talking to director Steven before this one. And, uh, you know, I was like, well, they have played the most, but I, they have doubled the team below them. So, that, I mean, uh, in fairness, they're doing pretty good at home. <laughs> you know, off the top of my head, I, and I'm not a math whiz, but that's averaging about 5.7 goals a game at home. That's a, I would have just said five and just kind of gone with that. But the fact that you went with Thank the you. decimal, I'm impressed. Thank you. Um, and it, it is, if we just, let's just take Battlefords out of the conversation because they're so sure. far ahead. Uh, but if you look at like from two all the way down to, uh, you know, maybe eight or nine, uh, well, I guess 9, 10, 11 are all tied. But if you go down, like, there's some good battles in there. I'm really curious to see if by the time, the next time we do this, we see a lot of movement in there. Right. Because we're going to see Humboldt, Weyburn, Estevan have many more home games at that point. Correct. Um, and so then, obviously, the numbers are going to balance out a little bit with games played and opportunity to actually score home goals. Uh, but so far, so good for Battlefords. And uh, let's see if they can stranglehold this I, uh, the rest of the way. I did the calculation. Oh, yeah. Uh, How close were you? 5.73 to be exact. <sighs> Not bad. Not bad for not a bad. broadcaster and not a not mathematician. Bad. Yeah. I mean, maybe, you, maybe you're in the wrong industry, Jerry. Oh, <laughs> Get Could that be. math degree. Uh, but one of the things you would have noticed in the kids' sport uh, cup standings, obviously, like you, you mentioned, Clark, there's a different amount of games played and everything. Uh, one thing, here's just a couple before we wrap it up and get to our uh, guest. I just want to uh, mention 343 goals mm -hmm. uh, total scored going into tonight's game uh, by the home teams. Can you do you know oh, the math shoot. on this one? Uh, like how many? How much money is that raised so far? Says does it start with a seven? No, <laughs> <laughs> not quite. Uh, Six thousand eight hundred sixty dollars. I was very close. It's Twenty dollars per. I was gonna say seven thousand because I I didn't hear the. Uh, yeah, anyways, I was pretty close. <laughs> I wasn't that far off. You were a few points off of your math, so I'm not that far you off. You were about a thousand off. I was. About I said a decimal. seven. It was six hundred. Six sixty eight hundred. That's not that far from seven. Okay. Well. 
It's all right, Clark. You did good. Let's get but to our guest. Price is right. Price is right rules. <laughs> all right, I would have lost. Nah, yeah, you're, you're right. Over. You're right. No, yeah, Anyways, yeah. <laughs> uh, as you would have seen, though, on that graphic, there is one team that has played a, I would say, a significant less amount of home games than um, some other teams in the Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League, and that is the Notre Dame Hounds. But they are in action tonight against the Yorkton Terriers. And to talk about that game and the Terriers as a whole, well, we're going to bring in our guest on the video chat line it's our good friend, co-host of SJHL Weekly, the voice of the Notre Dame Hounds, that being Jamie Nugabauer. Jamie, how are we doing today? I'm doing great. Uh, you know what? You, you mentioned there, uh, Jeremy, that we were going to talk about the Yorkton Terriers. That's okay. I'm fine to do that too. Oh, I mean, we, well, I mean, you guys are playing Yorkton tonight, so we have to. Well, you said you said we're like the rest, anyways. Yeah, we got. Ooh. Well, we'll talk. You know what? You're so good at your job, Jamie. That we could talk about we could talk about any team, really, but we're bringing you on Appreciate to talk it. about the the Notre Dame Hounds. Obviously, uh, the Hounds got off to a bit of a slow start, but I would say in the last couple of weeks they've really started to turn it around. We talked about uh, t- talked about it a bit with Will Dawson a couple of weeks ago on SJHL Weekly. But what have you seen from the Hounds uh, in the last couple of weeks that has kind of turned them around a little bit? Well, one thing I'll mention, and you guys mentioned it right there, uh, Jeremy and Clark, too, i got to say, you're doing a great job, is that they're actually they got to play a few games in Wilcox. Yeah. I mean, they <laughs> didn't have any games for forever in Wilcox, and that's that's neither here or there. there. It's, the ice is ice, and you just got to play wherever it is. So there's no excuses, but I think that certainly that certainly helped. Uh, a part of, another element of that is goaltending. I think a big part of that, we saw Tucker and Abene win the goalie of the week and mm-hmm. you know well deserved i think after wins against melford and flin Flon at home not you know not exactly easy competition and he was outstanding and then he was outstanding again uh, in the northeast swing that just concluded up in uh, nipowin and flin Flon and larange uh ashton billsberger played in larange he was great against larange too hounds feel really good about jeremy trombley cow who's getting the start tonight against yorkton so three really good goaltenders really hot goaltenders that that's the start and they're getting a little bit more offense, right? I mean, Carson Bayless has come in and hit the ground running five goals in five games for a guy that uh, Kindersley, you know, just kind of let go, uh, you know, for a pick. But mm-hmm. it, was, it was a hockey trade. And, you know, Carson has come in and, and been uh, a guy that can really finish and take advantage of some of the things that Will Dawson is creating. And Jared Sitch just keeps doing Jared Sitch things. Right. You know Sam Croon, and you know the list goes on, but it's just it's just a little bit more depth, you know, behind a guy like Will Dawson, who we've been talking about all year. And we've talked about it too a lot. Is the s- successful teams in the Saskatchewan Junior Hockey mm-hmm. League have depth, and that's a big thing that's important for all these teams. Um, because you brought him up, I, I, let's segue into Carson Bayless. Um, what have you seen from him since making that transition from Kindersley to uh, the Hounds? You know, I was thinking about, you know, how I might describe Carson uh, when I was just doing the dishes just now, actually. And it's a little bit, a little bit like Elliot Dutille, who scored 37 last year, is off, was, is off to Brooks this year and Lindenwood D1, you know, lighting things on fire out there in Alberta. But, uh, you know, he, he can kind of not be super visible over the course of 60 minutes, but he gets one or two chances and the, the puck's in the back of the net. Now, I don't think they're the same player. I think Carson's a center. Good centerman, you know, wins some draws. A quicker player than Elliot. I think Elliot's offensive instincts were insane, off the charts. But uh, it's kind of similar. It's that they just kind of need half a chance to to bury. And so far, you know, Carson has done that. And the big piece of you know what has uh, brought the Hounds back to I don't know what the term is respectability. What do you want to call it? It's early in the year, so let's not panic. You know, no matter what. But uh, you know, he's been great, and he's been great with uh, Will Dawson and. They've been great alongside Evan Vanden who had something completely different on that uh, that top line. Um, so, you know, big time kudos to a Carson Bayless guy who came in and maybe had some confidence issues in Kindersley. You know what? Six games, no points in Kindersley and, you know, in, in and out of the lineup and, uh, you know, up and down the lineup and all sorts of things. And, you know, that's just the way things go. Change of scenery and a new opportunity. And he and Dane Proby on the Hounds are best friends since they're kids. So they have that connection and. Uh, all of a sudden, it's clicking. So the Hounds are happy to have him. I tell you that much. You know, we've talked about him a lot, but let's talk about him some more. And that's Will Dawson. We had him on SJHL Weekly just uh, a couple of weeks ago. But from your perspective, I mean, you've been with the Hounds uh, since Will Dawson obviously has started his junior career. But how have you seen him grow as a hockey player and, mm-hmm. and obviously well-deserving now of his Division One scholarship? 
Yeah, I, I just think the confidence is, is there. I mean, the the work ethic, the determination, the athleticism. I mean, this is a guy that could have played NCAA college baseball. He was that good of an athlete. Like he was a baseball player, a catcher, uh, high in the Michigan high school baseball system. So he has that athleticism uh, in him. Uh, and, and, you know, he just, you know, kept getting better last year. I think it's not that huge of a surprise to me that he's come out and been a key guy because of the way that he played late last year and grew and played with, you know, Kevin Anderson uh, on the, his line, the Princeton commit, no, Princeton forward now, uh, and, and learned everything he could from him in terms of, you know, being a professional on and off the ice right. and uh, in the gym and, you know, how to play and where to go on the ice. And, and there's still lots to learn for Will. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's a lot to work with. And I think that's what Air Force Academy saw in him is the future, even more than the present. And let's talk about the Hounds other Division mm-hmm. One commit. Jared Sitch, she's been, you know, yeah. just an anchor on the blue line for uh, the Notre Dame Hounds. You know, even when the Hounds weren't at the beginning of the season getting off to a slow start, Jared Sitch looked unbelievable. What have you seen from him and, and how have you mm-hmm. seen his game grow and how important he's been for this Hounds team so far this year? Yeah, so there's a t- couple different uh, a couple a couple different elements to that, right? One is the one is the captaincy that he's mm-hmm. been given. You know, this is a guy that's been a hound for a long time, high school student, and it didn't all come together for him right away. He had to work his way through the minor, like the minor hockey system, the high school teams from you know double A teams to the Notre Dame Argos triple A. Right. People don't really know how it used to kind of work the Argos up to the Hounds triple or never played for the Hounds triple A. In fact, <clears throat> he went oh, straight wow. to the, from the Argos to the Hounds junior A. And I think it's just been uh, a steady rise. It looks to the outside like a meteoric rise, but it's been steady and just a, a hardworking thing. I think he's got genetic elements to him. He's just a cyborg. Like, <laughs> you know, we, we talked to him uh, before the, the three and three tra- trip up Nipawin and Flynn Flan and LaRange, and he basically was like, you know what, coach, like, I'll play as many minutes as you want, and like, honestly, I've never seen him be tired before, like, he could play 25, 30, 35 minutes a game, and he'd be fine, he'd love it, in fact, that's the type of kid he is, and you know what, he's putting out points, because, you know, he's he's sort of next level, I think, already, in a lot of ways, Uh, he's got a release that gets through from the point as well as anybody, if not better than anybody in this league. He's so hard to deal with defensively when he's one on one with you. He's more physical this year. He's he's kidding people. You know, he's doing it all right now for for the Hounds, and it's just a treat to watch. I think I said to Brett, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, like can't take it for granted to have mm-hmm. a kid like that around and watch him. And same like the same thing I said with you know Kevin Anderson last year and and other guys I've seen over my career. Um, you know, it's just he's just a treat. He's six three. He can skate like the wind. He's as strong as an ox. He never gets tired. You know, there's there's a lot to like right there. And I think, you know, uh, man, I know this sounds crazy, but an NHL team could do a lot worse, you know, to just keep a real close eye on him as he gets to you know college next year. For sure. I want to go back to one thing uh, you had touched on earlier on, and it's the goaltending. We've seen the Hounds get really mm-hmm. good goaltending, especially as of late. Um, but you mentioned the Hounds now have three goaltenders. Is that the plan moving forward for the foreseeable future? Uh for the hounds Mm -hmm. yeah as far as i know i mean for for right now and and and, you know all three of them have been playing well lately all three of them have practicing well i think having jeremy or a johan pardon me not jeremy johan trombley cow you don't want me playing uh, that for you that's for sure no well could be worse you know i I, I (laughs) think but the 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 thing is, I'm sure you know. I I gotta feel like that impacted Tucker and Abenay and Ashton Billsberger too, knowing right, that you know, this guy's come in from the North American League and, and made an impact. Um, but yeah, all, all three of them look good. I mean, J- uh, Johan hasn't played a, a game of regular season junior hockey yet, so before I before I say he's a superstar, we'll wait and see. But yeah, certainly they've uh, they've figured something out here. After you know, early in the year, it seemed like it was a real problem. So. Uh, but they, you know, those guys hadn't played any junior hockey either. So, you know, it's hard to sort of judge them too harshly based on that. And um, also the team's playing a lot better around him. It's got to be, you know, both and, right? It's not one or the other. Right. Um, obviously, you know, the, you mentioned the Hounds have been playing better as of late. They're kind of bunched in with that mm-hmm. big group in the Saskatchewan Junior Hockey yeah. League in the standings that are kind of right around each and each other. But I think the one thing when I look at the standings, um, you know, it's a tough break for both the Hounds and the Clippers, obviously being in the same division with 
the humble Broncos and the battle for North Stars. I guess, how can they potentially overcome, you know, being in a tougher division, you know, to, you know, make the playoffs and, you know, do some damage in the playoffs uh, this year? So there's a couple of ways that I look at that. And one is, and I say this to Scott Barney all the time, and he and I chat, is that I think it's great that the Hounds play the Humble Broncos a lot. Not because, obviously, that helps in the standings, because obviously over the years it hasn't. But it makes you better when you play against really good teams. Like That's just the way it is, right? right? So it's it's a treat. And then I also talked to Braden Klamosko, and the funny thing is we laugh. It doesn't matter where the stars are, where the hounds are in the standings. It always seems like a barn burner when the hounds and the stars play each other. So, you know, the hounds have played up to facing the stars pretty well the last couple of years. So that's that's that. And uh, overcome it. I mean, it's not really a problem if you think about it anymore because this, the way the standings work, oh, it's yeah. not that important, right? Like, you're not – it's important in that we maybe play them a few more times, but it's – it's not as bad as it was where the Hounds would play the Broncos 10 times in a season. Uh, you know, I think it's maybe one or two more games against Battlefords and Kindersley and a few less against Humboldt now. And and the, the winner of the division doesn't matter really anymore. So, you know, the, the way that they've made it work out is a little bit a little bit better in terms of the competition element. But I also just think that the final point I'll make is I think it just makes the Hounds better to play these great teams as much as possible and you know obviously a long way to go so I, I think the hounds feel good about you know getting better and being more competitive in those games uh, as we move on this year too when you think about it it's so crazy to think about that we're already talking about potential playoffs and push for playoffs yeah. and that's just with the obviously you know how tight the league has been this year when you look at the standings as of right now but that leads into actually a question we got on twitter for our good friend matt from our good friend matt barrett up in melfort he wanted, uh, he wanted to ask you, and this is a tough one, how many of the current yeah. playoff teams do you think are going to make the playoffs? That's a tough one. Yeah, I saw that I question. I saw that question. My first, and, is, yeah. my first thought is that Maddie just wants me to get in trouble. Um, Maybe. I'm going to say, <laughs> yeah. we will just I'm have to get say, him back next time Matt's on. Fair enough. I'm going to say six of the eight are going to make the playoffs. Fair enough. Do you want to yeah. dive into that a bit more or leave it at that? <laughs> I think I'll leave it. Fair enough. <laughs> I, I respect that. All right. Um, let's back to the, um, the Hounds. Um, tonight, back at home, taking on the Yorkton Terriers, who have won uh, or lost, rather, four games in a row. What, what do you expect uh, out of tonight's matchup? <sighs> yeah, big ice hockey, right? I right. I think it's. Uh, I think that's a pretty nice advantage for the Hounds too, and you know Yorkton coming in on a back to back, uh, you know, and and sometimes that's tough, and sometimes that's a thing where guys uh, realize that they have to dig a little bit deeper, pay a little bit more attention to detail on Wilcox ice because mistakes get, you know, burned because there's all that space to to try to come back and right. and whatnot. I think, uh, yeah, it, it should be interesting. I mean, the Yorkton Terriers uh, were were all played by Humboldt yesterday, let's be honest, and the Hounds have been sitting around waiting, so that's not always easy as they, the Hounds and not played since last Saturday. So, you know, it's always tense, it's always tight, it's always nail-biting, grindy-type games between Notre Dame and Yorkton. You know, Matt Hare and the Terriers have been coming to Wilcox for, you know, a long time, so they know what to do. And the Terriers have made a couple ads lately, right? Mm -hmm. They had those uh, uh, Flowey and Freese, uh, Tice Freese, I believe their names. I'm trying to figure out how to pronounce them. Uh, from Olds, and uh, also they got uh, Quinton Unreiner, who I believe is going to be in the lineup, you know, out of the Calgary Canucks in the AJHL. And Matt Hare talked about how he felt like his decor was good, lots of young talent. Mm -hmm. You think about Nemo, you think about Mays, uh, but he felt like maybe they were just a little bit too young right now right. To, to compete on a regular, regular basis. But I expect those guys to come in and show some savvy and experience and be good. And I think, you know, no team emotionally deals with tough situations or few teams in this league deal with emotional situations as well as the Arctic Terriers have the last number of years in terms of, you know, feeling like the underdog coming in, being scrappy, being tough to play against. Um, so that's a really good challenge for this Notre Dame team to deal with after having, you know, a couple of days off and rest and everybody expects them to take it to Yorkton a little bit here, but that's a dangerous, dangerous situation for a young Notre Dame team that, you know, really a couple game, couple good, a couple wins, good, decent trip up north, but mm -hmm. nothing has really been proven, right? I mean, they look they look good over a little bit of a stretch, but 
it's still for them to prove it over a period of time, a consistent period of time that they can show up from the start of games, put pucks in the back of the net. That's always important. And, and just keep it going because nobody cares, you know, if you if you have a good couple of results, but you don't get, you know, a point or two uh, every every couple of games. That's right. just the way that the world works. Right. So it'll be interesting. And that's the way the SJHL has worked so far this mm-hmm. season. You know, if you have a bad week, you could drop four or five spots yeah. in the SJHL standings. But uh, final question for you, Jamie, and this one, we're going to end on a, a nice lighthearted note. And you might have seen it already, but uh, our good friend, Kyle McIntyre, commissioner of the Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League. You can follow him on Twitter at SJHL Commish. Nice little plug there. Uh, He wants to know how and when did you get the bug to do play by play? And who do you consider to be your sports casting mentor? You know, I, I, growing up in the Toronto area, my brother and I went to the Hockey Hall of Fame a lot. And at the Hockey Hall of Fame, there's this little booth you could go to that has TSN, had TSN stuff. And you can, you know, call Paul Henderson's goal or yeah. call Wayne Gretzky's goal. And so as far as I can remember, even from five, six, seven, that's the first place I went to right there and, and thought it was electric and fun and had a great time. That's the first thing I always wanted to do. And then, uh, you know, in 2010, 2011, a great coach, in my opinion, you know, the best junior A head coach in Canada that, that I've known anyways the last decade or so. He's now at the University of Maine, but uh, he, he he gave me an opportunity to just do it for on a lark back in 2011, I guess. And <clears throat> been doing it ever since. But uh, yeah, ever since uh, being a kid, watching Bob Cole and Harry Neal call Leaf games and, and Olympic games and whatever big games, just I always felt the sense that there was something special about the way that a broadcaster could make it an event to, to watch it. And so I got it, uh, I got it there. And uh, yeah, in terms of sort of the, the sports cast or whatever that I looked up to, Bob Cole is the best for me. Um, just all, every game that Bob Cole called was an event and oh, it yeah. was exciting and drew, drew you in, in a special way. It felt like he could have, he could have called, you know, a men's league game on a, a midnight on a Thursday, probably. And it would have been uh, felt like an event. So I'm going to go with Bob Cole. <laughs> You know what? Bob Cole could probably broadcast somebody, you know, painting, and <laughs> yeah. and it would I would be fully in invested into yeah. it for sure. Uh, Jamie, thank you so much for taking some time to join us today. We really appreciate it, and of course, have a great call tonight as uh, the Hounds take on the Terriers. I really appreciate you guys having me on. Thank you. All right, that is the play-by-play voice of the Notre Dame Hounds, Jamie Newcombe, who also is our co-host. On SJHL Weekly, always the great friend of the insight. program. Yeah, he's friend of the program. Yeah. He he, you know, on SJHL Weekly, he's a third of the program. He's a third of it. Yeah. He's a third of the program. Absolutely. Uh, always great to chat uh, with Nugzi. Uh, great, you know what? Just great that he can um, actually call. He hasn't had many home games to call this this year so far. Yeah, get him back home. Get some home cooking, Nugs. Yeah. He, well, Honestly. he was just doing the dishes prior to the interview. He <laughs> mentioned that. So maybe he was doing some home cooking. <laughs> he was doing some. He was doing some home cooking. Yeah. Of course, uh, we mentioned that is uh, that's the lone game on the schedule tonight. So, uh, I mean, we've kind of dived into the, the Thursday night game. So should we just jump ahead to Friday? Yeah, or what do you expect out of tonight? Well, yeah, it's it's going to be, like you said, Notre Dame getting finally to be at home and Yorkton coming off of, I think Nugsy mentioned it, four straight losses, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so I think Yorkton's going to want to get back on the – on the on the track here mm-hmm. like I think they they started off the season although they didn't play very many games at the beginning of the season 100%. they started off so well uh yeah. they may be surprised a few people like Nugs even said like Matt Harris said like we're a very young team like we're they are we're, yep. you know we're we're getting by and we're doing well but we're still very young and um the expectations maybe uh got a little out of hand I guess at the beginning of the season but not to say that they are they're just you know they're off to a, a bit of a last rough little stretch uh, so they're going to want to get back on track Notre Dame's at home they want to mm-hmm. you know put a statement on it that they they're going to be a good team at home and they sure. like you said great goaltending Caleb Allen had a rough night last night mm-hmm. getting there this week getting roughed up on, on the road so uh, let's see, Yorkton, uh, you know, I think he gave up four goals the other night or something like that. So You mean last night? Is last night, yeah, exactly. So, so he gave up six last night. Was it six? six three, yeah. There you go, six. Uh, so I think they're going to want to bounce back a little bit. And I, I don't think this is going to be that bad of a matchup at all. I think it's going to be quite good. I mean, I think it's going to be a great game. Yeah. Um, he, you know, Nugsy mentioned uh, the Vrays twins. I, we're, we're figuring out the pronunciation. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, but... <laughs> 
Uh, Louis Vrays had two goals last night uh, yeah. for the York Terriers in his debut. A three-point yeah. night. Yeah. Three-point night. He had a great night. And um, uh, the other defenseman that they acquired that Jamie mentioned, Quinton Unreiner, he is, he is confirmed he is going to make his debut tonight. I have the lineup right in front of me. And you mentioned it, Caleb Allen. He uh, allowed six goals last night to the Humboldt Broncos Wednesday night. And he's going to get the nod in between the pipes for the York Terriers. So they'll look to bounce back and snap a four-game losing skid. And just one thing to add to the four-game losing streak, like it's unfortunate that Yorkton has lost four in a row. Two games to battle for one to Humboldt. Tough. And they were right there with Kindersley in their third game in three nights uh, when they did that three uh, that trip. But it was a, a tough third period that resulted them in losing that game. So they'll look to bounce back tonight against the Notre Dame Hounds. But let's move on to Friday. Three games on tap. Melville continues their four and five as they head to the zoo as they take on the Flin Flon Bombers at the Whitney Forum. The Nipwin Hawks play host to the Weyburn Red Wings. And there it is, the first half of the home and home between the Humboldt Broncos and Ooh, the Battle for North the Stars. The marquee. Yeah. It is. Uh, before we get to that home and home, though, let's – I. you know what? I, I think an underrated one, though, this weekend, an underrated pair of games this weekend. It's going to be Weyburn and Nipwin because those two teams are – right beside each other in the standings. And I think the points are going to be valuable for both those clubs uh, this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. And I think they're going to really want to get those wins. Like you said, like we had that conversation with, with Jamie and obviously Matt Barrett asked the question, which teams in a playoff spot right now mm -hmm. will make the playoffs and which might fall out? Well, now, obviously, with the divisions and everything, it, the league standings don't necessarily paint the playoff picture perfectly. But as of right now, Notre Dame and York or Nippon are tied for a playoff spot. Right. They're in that eighth spot right now. So, I mean, every win is very important for those two teams. Uh, so they're going to want to get like right They're They're going to want to battle it out. And it's going to be a tight yeah. one with those guys. To add to that. Yeah, we I think we mentioned on. That would have been on Monday on SJHL Weekly. There was five teams tied with 12 points. Yep. And um, now. Four now. But now there there's was four. Five. Yeah. So at least maybe We're a little bit four. of separation. But yeah, it's, uh, you know, you see Nippon and Weyburn. They both have 12 points going into this weekend. Weyburn 6 and 10. Nippon's 5, 8, 1 and 1. Nippon's lost three straight. Weyburn's looking to bounce back after uh, a 4 2 loss to the Melford Mustangs. So. You know, that, I expect two very good games between those two teams uh, this weekend. And then, obviously, we mentioned Melville looking to try and build off that win in LaRange. Uh, taking on the Flin Flon Bombers, who have been quite quiet lately just because they've only played probably one game in about two weeks. Mm -hmm. Because they play, they after their four and five, they had about a week off. Then last week, they only played the Hounds on the Friday. And now they get another week off and they play Melville Friday, Saturday. Yeah, one quick note just to go back to, sorry, Nippon and Weyburn really quick. Nippon, fifth best power play in the league. Weyburn, most penalized team in the league. So keep an mm -hmm. eye on that. But yes, going back to that, you actually told me a really interesting note sure. about Melville. And I'd love I you did. to tell the show that note about the goaltending uh, oh, decisions yes, in La yes, 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 And yes. I actually really think this is a great point. So can you please tell everybody <laughs> that point, please? If you hadn't described it, I wouldn't have I, You were lost I for a sec. I was like, what I had you, you for a sec. Where are you going with this? Yeah. No, actually, and to be honest with you, it was just something I heard. Here's a plug. On the post-game show on GX94, Melville Millionaires Junior Hockey last night, mm -hmm. um... Benny Walchuk was doing his post-game interview like he always does after the game with the coach. And I was intrigued that uh, Melville last night went with the, because you're playing four and five, they, they went with the same goaltender that they did um, on Tuesday. And Kelton Pine didn't see action in either game. So, but they made a very interesting point and that being that, you know, it was their first time up north this season. Those rinks are much different than the Horizon Credit Union Center in Melville. So to get used to a new rink being a bit smaller and those bounces at the Mel yeah. are definitely tough to deal with. And it, it didn't. So it was Tuesday's game for Melville. They had to get used to a lot of you know, different things with the rink and everything like that. And they felt that. If they had started Kelton Pine for the second game, well, it would have been another player that would have had to get used to the, the bounces and everything like that. So that's why they stuck with the same goaltender going forward into Wednesday. And despite, it paid off. It paid off. Now, yeah. And that despite um, him allowing, you know, five goals and 55 shots. 
Yeah. However, I mean, still a great night. Still, yeah. save percentage wise, still a great night. Pretty good. Um, Can you do so, the math on that one, Math Wizard? Uh, yeah. Fifty actually, out of fifty-five. Yeah. It should be fairly simple, right? It sounds simple when you say it out loud. Yeah, it's ninety-one percent. She, look at you, nailed it. Um, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna guess you're right. <laughs> Can we get a fact check in the back there, boys? Get it. <laughs> we'll get it in, in fact the checkers. Fact, the SHL check. fact checker. Yeah. Well, we could sell that. We That's could. It. There's another thing we can sell. It's great. <laughs> there we go. Um, Always coming up with ideas. So, I guess my point, I guess, with that that notion yeah. that was explained on the post game show with Benny is um, potentially does Kelton Pine start both games? Maybe uh, Friday, Saturday, or maybe right. they go with the same goaltender. I doubt you go with the same goaltender for four games and five nights, but. Um, you never know. Yeah, it's just an interesting little tidbit. Yep. Uh, that was, I just thought that was really interesting and and really thoughtful of the coaching staff. And also honestly. makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. give credit to Mike and Rooney out. and his coaching staff for sure. That's and a, that's a big one. Uh, and then finally, let's go to Saturday. Much busier nights. Uh, five games on the schedule. Of course, the second matchup between Melville and Flin Flon. The Notre Dame Hounds will head down to Affinity Place to take on the Estevan Bruins. The second game between Wayburn and Nipwim. Battlefords versus Humboldt in the second half of their home and home. And then Melfort versus LaRange. Now, we didn't touch on Battleford and Humboldt, and that's just because I figured we would probably expect, uh, you know, spend some significant time on, on, on this matchup. Obviously, right now, they're, they're the class of the Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League. Battleford 14-0-0 and 1. Their only blemish is a shootout loss to Melfort. Humboldt's 12-2. You know, they've only had, they had the uh, home loss to LaRange, where they allowed two goals in the last minute and a half. And then the loss in Kindersley, where they gave up four goals in the third period to lose 5-3. I know at the beginning of the month, when these two teams were still undefeated, we were talking about it. You know, maybe this, would they still remain undefeated? Would be that weekend. Would yeah. it be the weekend where two undefeated teams met each other? Right. Um, obviously, that didn't come into fruition, but they are still, as of right now, the two best teams in the Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League. And I expect both rinks, Battleford Friday, Humboldt Saturday, to just be rocking. I, I would hope so. I mean, like you said, like Battlefords has been at the top of the CJHL rankings now for a couple of weeks. I mean, they've been up and down, but I think they've been right near the top. Well, in the last three weeks, uh, they've been the first place team in the CJHL top 20 rankings twice. And then the other week, they were second. Yeah. Right. So, so they, they big are. Big dip there. <laughs> it's a, it's big a down week for Battlefords. Down week. But. <laughs> And that was after their shootout loss. Right, after the loss. That was the only, yeah. which, yeah. Yeah. And Humboldt's, well, Humboldt's been up and down on that list as well. They've been right up near the top Correct. as well. They were third, I think, at one point, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, third or fifth. Yeah. So, I mean, they've been they've been right there, too. So, like you said, this is, it's kind of lined up to be one of the marquee matchups of the season so far. Uh, back to back, of course. So, we're going to see two in a row. Right. Right. Um, also, two very good special teams teams. Yeah. Uh, I think Humboldt has the second best power play. Battleford's is, is the third. I'm just looking at it here. And two solid penalty kills as well. So special teams is going to be important all weekend. Staying discipline is going to be important because these teams can strike fast mm-hmm. and often. Mm-hmm. Uh, we saw it with Battleford's, like we said the other night. We talked about this earlier. It was a close game, 3-1. You know, Estevan was staying in it. And then all of a sudden, mm-hmm. it's 7-2. Uh, right. Battleford's has that ability. And, and with Humboldt getting Jacob Boucher, we talked about that earlier. Yep. That's he's, a bit, yeah. he's sparked that offense even more than it already was uh it's so it's adding more depth it's adding more depth and so yeah. we're, we're seeing two teams two early titans in the league so to speak clash mm-hmm. i don't want to get any copyrights or trademarks on this one so i won't say uh, the idea. movie title that i'm thinking of but um yeah, anyways it's a uh, it's going to be a really great weekend in both markets Please get out there and mm-hmm. see these guys because this is this is a great time to see them as well. Well, I I would say uh, all the games this weekend I think uh, all on the schedule them. are definitely some. There's some really interesting matches. I was going to say there's another one that I'm actually really looking forward to but, as well. But I'll let yeah, you... before we put a bow on on yeah. Balford and Humble, yeah, like I mean I'm just looking at the the standings and the stats with it. Battleford, 80 goals for this season in 15 games, 29 against. It's a difference it's of 51. Math. I know it says right 50, beside it, but 51. we could do more math. Um, I mean, in Humboldt, 70 goals for 
40 goals against. Yeah. Like this any is- other time of the year, any other season, that's probably your best differential in the league. Correct. That's second best because Battlefords has been so strong. Correct. So, I mean, it's it's crazy. So it is gonna going to be one. too... I mean, I think any time these two teams play this year is going to be um, unreal. Get your My Hockey TV account now. Um, if you can't make it out to the rink. Yeah. If you can't make it um, out, exactly. what I was... Yeah, I was going to say is, you know, I, I, I think the question... I'm sure people are going to ask, the fans would ask, when you look at this matchup, is Humboldt going to be the first team to hand Battleford a loss in regulation? A regulation loss. A regulation that's loss. The, that's the most important thing. Is that, And we'll see what happens. Yeah. What do I always say, Clark? Uh, shoot. <laughs> I, said, I said it last week on the show, you didn't sure I? sure did. <laughs> it's always tough to beat the same Dang team. <laughs> Twice in a row. Twice in a row on yeah. back-to-back nights. On back-to-back nights. It's always tough. It's... And it's Extremely always sunny tough. in Philadelphia, I've heard, too. I've never been. but never been. I've been there a couple yes. times. Yes. Really, we're looking forward to that match. But what's, what's the other one? Yeah, I was going to say, can we just put the, the matchup screen sure. up again really quick here, gents? Uh, the one I'm looking forward for to because it's for Saturday. Sorry, yeah, specifically. Thank you. Uh, Melfort LaRange. Yeah. That game uh, has so much on the line because they are neck and neck in that division and if if Melford comes out with the win on that one they leapfrog Larange and not that that's major in October necessarily but every game in that division matters because of how tight that division is especially at the top top three teams they're all very close that's I think that's the point I think you yeah it's worth mentioning exactly Um, you know at the beginning of the year we were kind of talking about how that division similar to the Viterra you have all four teams very close together. Um, but now, Nipwin's three-game winning streak. Now we're talking about them with LaRange and Flin Flon competing for a division title. They're, yeah, the Melford's three te- three-game, the, you said Nipwin. Melford's three-game winning streak. Yes. Yeah. Um, they're only, the three teams are only separated by two points. Now, with that being said, Flin Flon has played um, less games, and they currently lead the vi- division mm-hmm. with a 9-3, 1-1 record and 20 points. But you mentioned it. Uh, LaRange playing Melfort in LaRange. It's a very important game. Very important game for, for both teams. And think about it. If LaRange had won last night against yeah. Melville, they would have been in first place in the Sherwood division. Mm-hmm. So that's where it's going to get really interesting between those three, those three teams. Um, and I think any time those three teams play, like you mentioned, it's going to be it's going to be interesting just because of how tight those three teams are uh in the Sherwood division yeah I think both teams have a night off on Friday if I'm not mistaken so you're probably going to see the marquee goalie matchup of Dawson Smith and Joel Favreau in that one Joel Mm -hmm. Favreau I should say uh so I think just everything's lining up for that game to be a really solid one I'm just looking forward to that one I'm going to be tuning in for sure for sure you know what before we wrap up too we should also talk about just briefly let's chat about the Viterra division because um we, you mentioned, you know, three teams battling at the top of the standings, it being very tight. I mean, the Viterra division, it's remained the same. It's, it's from the top to the bottom is separated by six points. Yeah. And now I think all those teams in that division, obviously they're, they're still in it for a division title and competing for it and making, you know, like you mentioned games in October, which I still think you don't, you don't hear often us talking about games in October making a, a big difference, but they could make a difference, like games this weekend. If Weyburn goes into to Nipwin, for example, uh, wins two games, you know, they're right there. Or if Yorkton bounce back, or if Melville wins two games in, in Flin Flon. Yeah. You're looking at a shift in, 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 in the standings and, and a shift in power in the Viterra division. Well, I think I talked about it, I want to say two weeks ago, maybe on this show, uh, how Melville, I think if they could just get some of that secondary scoring, we had a bit of a conversation about Melville, yep. uh, that we could see them maybe start putting together some strings of wins. And I think that's been starting to happen. You see Braden Freifogel get a couple of points the other night. You saw Brecken Dan Hartog, who has the best name in the league. I, that's my vote for best name in the league. Captain Breck. of the SJHL yeah. all-name team. He got a goal the other night, and I think he put up a point the other night in their win as right. well uh and young young Caden Skolmoski I think got the game or the fifth goal for the Correct. for Melville the other night as well so some of those guys are starting to put points on the board and not only that but we talked about the two top ones Zach Kane and Noah, Noah Wills they're doing fantastic they're continuing to do fantastic so yeah. I mean and I think they've even split those guys up in terms of their lines I don't think they're playing on the same line every night 
So that's another interesting thing is that they are separating their at scores times, as well yeah. at times. At, at times they are. I, I think, mean, I'm sure I think that, last night they played together. They might. Yeah, I, mean, I think they move them around a little bit, which I just find really interesting and a great, mm-hmm. honestly, with Mike Rooney at the helm, I think that's a great move to keep the lines yep. flowing a little bit and you never know who's going to spark who any given night. So I love where Melville's going. And I think I said it a couple weeks ago, that secondary scoring picks up. I think they've got some goaltending recently. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kelton Pine and even the the guy who put up all those saves the back-to-back nights we talked about in Clement Labillois. I think I did that okay. Uh, another, he's probably the goalie for yeah, the, all, the all name team. No, you named Labalois. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah. he's probably the goalie for the all, all name team. I would team. say so. Now, Melville's got some great ones uh, on the all name team. Yeah, uh, they, they sure do. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll bring that out. That's coming. The all name all star yeah, team. Yeah, we're going to save that for maybe Christmas. Yeah, coming. It's coming. Stay um, tuned. Uh, but yeah, I, I just love where Melville's going. So, like you said, I guess to wrap up the conversation here about the Viterra, the, the Viterra division is. Let, I'm just I'm very curious once those games even out mm-hmm. how it's going to look and is it going to still be close or will there be some separation well and that's the other thing is the games need to even out they need to even because out. Estevan's played the most games in the league yeah 19 and they're 9 and 10 right and lead the Viterra division but then Melville's only played 16 Yorkton's only played 14 yeah and Wayburn's played 16 so let's see those even out I'm curious hopefully we'll see them even out in the next couple of weeks yeah. for sure and it should but before we wrap up the show this week, I we asked Jamie it, so I'll ask you it, mm. and then I'll give my answer. Okay, let me get this so, up here. Yeah, pull up the standings. Yep. How many of the current playoff teams do you think will make the playoffs? Even though I still think talking about playoffs in October is a, a little much, but you know what? We asked Jamie. It was a we we. He said six. We kind of made him. We kind of forced him to answer it. So. We'll, we'll, we'll help Jamie out. We'll also answer this question. So I'm, I'm going to say the cutoff point, if you just go to the league standings, right? Because it's, it's obviously it's not the exact playoff format when you go to the league standings because the division leaders get the top three still. Yes. Am I mistaken in saying that? So uh, Estevan would technically be in third. I think they got rid of that. Did they? I'm okay. Not sure. Well, let's just go with. I, I'm pretty sure. They let's got just them. eliminate that thought process and just no, go I, eight, I, top I eight. Just look at, the, I would say, look at the league overall standings. Yeah. I could definitely see a scenario where seven of those current top eight make it. Um, and I think the battle is going to be, guess who where it's going to be? The highway rivalry of Melville and Yorkton. I think whoever, whichever one of those teams gets hot yeah. the rest of the way, right. I think stays in and one of them might fall. Uh, well, now that's, and when you say rest of the way, I, I think there's it's a funny. long rest uh, of the way. You mean 80% of the season? <laughs> yeah, 80% of the season. Well, we have to take this into context. It's very <laughs> early. That's but, right, uh, Siri. Thank you, Siri. Um, Jamie but, just texted me. Said, he, Jamie's still watching in our, in our VMix call, and he yeah. said 100%. They got rid of that. The they did three, get rid of that? Which is good. In my opinion, I was, I was never a big fan of that, to be honest with you. Well, yeah. The, top we did, th- the division winner getting a top three seed. I remember we saw some really interesting like swaps and positions, like teams going from yeah. like seventh well, to Well, and there was and examples then, of it yeah. in the NHL and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, that too. And you know what? Good call. So it is just top eight. One, top one eight, plays eight, one two eight. plays seven. Yes, sir. Okay, so there we go. So, so who's your, what's your answer? So I'm going to say seven of the current eight are going to stay in it. Do you want me to go farther? Nope. Nope. I, yeah, we, Jamie I, I kind of said. Jamie said six. Yeah. Uh, you say seven. I think seven. Ooh. But that's really hard for me to say because obviously. Well, I mean, it's just guessing right now. You know, Nipwin plays a few more games. They get some wins. All of a sudden. It's not. It, they get in there. Wayburn gets well, hot you can make for a stretch. A, you can make an. You, know? you can make an argument for any team making the playoffs. And Kindersley, I love the way they've been playing lately. So you can make an they argument. could win some games. You and get can in. make an argument for any team to make the playoffs. Exactly. The question though is, how many of the top eight right now? Yeah. Make the playoffs. You should say. So you uh, say seven. You should say four and just get chaos. 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 Uh, no, I'm not going to say four. I'll. Um, the problem is going last. Is I if I say six yeah, or seven, no, you, some, yeah. everyone's gonna be like, "Well, you just backpacked their answer, right?" Right. So I feel I feel obligated to say a different answer. Yeah. But I kind of agree. I would say six. Six. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that's six. very fair. I think six. But I, you can make it. Like I said, you can make an argument from. Right now in the standings, you can make an argument six through twelve of. You know. Even five through twelve. Like, five through twelve. You I know, mean, it's four, tough. I mean, from four to twelve is eight points. So yeah, and it's tough too when there's four teams 
with the same amount of points from eight to 11. Like that's, right. it's hard to say, you know, necessarily which ones of those are going to get in and out and go up and down. And yeah. I, I just, I, yeah, I'm going to say, yeah, I'll stick with my answer seven. I think I'm good with seven. Yeah. It's a, it's tough though. <laughs> you know what? Here's, here's what we'll do. It's the funnest part to talk about as, as a fan, as analysts, as, as people that runs these kinds of shows, these conversations are the best part of why this league is so at, fun. At the end of the day, we are bringing up topics that generate conversation. Yeah. And that's what we're doing. And now you can have those debates around the rink. Let us know on our social media channels what you think the answer is. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Oh, my God. <laughs> Thanks, Ronnie Radio. Uh, yeah. Hey, like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Follow our TikTok. You can watch our SJHL Road Trip series, oh, yeah. which... Um, it's close. Close well, to Three more. Up. Three yeah. more to get done. Three We're more rinks there. to visit this year. We're getting there. Um, and then after that, we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll see. Hopefully, Maybe we don't we'll get, do some revisits. Hopefully, we don't get canceled. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I wasn't going to go there, but okay. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, follow us on uh, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Get uh, on YouTube. If you, if you can do us a favor. That's a big one for us. You know, that's where we post all of our shows, all of uh, our features, all of the highlights. Uh, for the Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League. We post it on our YouTube channel. Player of the Week announcements, too. That Player of the Week's announcement. There. And, hey, you know what else is going to be on there next week, Clark? What? Players of the Month announcement. <gasps> That's fun. That's exciting. Because guess what? Yeah. The That's... calendar turns over next week. Yeah. So there you go. It's exciting. So subscribe to our YouTube channel. Get on there. Thank you. Uh, we greatly appreciate your support. And speaking of support, we have amazing support from our sponsors of course our podcast sponsor is sgi who do an amazing job of you know they support all of our audio uh podcasts which also we should mention clark is uh so if you can't you know watch the show on either youtube uh facebook etc both sjhl weekly and sjhl insider you can listen on demand uh wherever you get your podcasts apple spotify so be sure to subscribe to us uh, across wherever you get your podcasts from as well. But yes, SGI is our podcast sponsor. But this show and SJHL Weekly wouldn't be possible without all of our great sponsors. Chevrolet, Capital Auto Mall, Great Western, Cantera Seeds, RBC, Sastel, SGU, Direct West, Saskatchewan Construction, Safety Association, Tourism Saskatchewan, and Young's equipment thank you so much uh without your support we wouldn't be able to sit here talk for an hour about hockey each and every day like you mentioned we probably still will but we wouldn't be able to do it uh to the degree and to the uh quality that we want to provide for the saskatchewan junior hockey league uh one game tonight three games on friday and five games on saturday another Busy stretch of games in the Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League, so be sure to get out and support your local team. If, if you can't, uh, you can catch any of the games on Hockey TV. Get your subscriptions now. And you know what? If you can't watch any of the games, guess what? Our great team here at IKS Media, we got you covered. We'll have the highlights uh, as well for every game in the Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League. For Clark Monroe, my name's Jeremy Corrigan. This has been another great episode of SJHL Insider, and enjoy the games this weekend, everyone.